we want to get onto some of you know the, the more optimistic versions and vision that you have and you want to lay out for the EU. But I must ask you first of all about the tax reform in the U.S. You sent a letter to the U.S. Treasury Secretary protesting against this GOP tax overhaul. What exactly are your concerns? Well, we, we are not disputing the fact that the uh, United States of America are free to uh, fix their tax rates and to reform their own uh, tax system. But the question is, uh, does it have consequences on the action that we lead together at the international level in order to uh, uh, fight tax uh, avoidance and tax fraud on the one hand? And is this compatible with uh, the rules of WTO? And so we might have questions about that. And there is another issue, which is whether to know uh, if the gigantic uh, deficit and debt burden uh, has a consequence for the world economy and also for the EU. Okay, so what will the EU do if the US doesn't actually address your concerns that you've just laid out very clearly? No, you said that was a protest. That's not a protest. That's a worry. Uh, we have been mandated by the uh, ECOFIN Council to enter into dialogue with the United States, and we want uh, to have some clarifications about that. Uh, at this moment, this reform is not yet voted, although uh, I understand <coughs> that there is a, an agreement between uh, the, the House and the Senate uh, ongoing. So uh, we are in the dialogue, uh, dialogue process. And uh, we uh, also work together in the framework of G7 and G20, and we will go on that way. And the Europeans are going to, to set their own positions. We, the Commission, wrote to Steven Mnuchin, but also did five finance ministers from the so-called G5, which are the biggest countries inside the EU. No, and I, I know, understand, I, I un imagine this is a technicality, Mr. Moscovici, but actually what happens, so if, if they pass a law without addressing your, your queries, um, let's not call them concerns, but your queries, if they don't respond, you know, what can you do? Do you bring them to court via the W Trade Organization or do you leave it? No, we are not yet there and I'm never the what-if guy. First. Uh, we expect uh, a, an answer to this letter, and then we will consider uh, what uh, will be the consequences of uh, uh, differences that can uh, be uh, here or there. And we'll have to examine that first among us, the Europeans, and then in a full dialogue <coughs> with our American friends. But the, the best case solution uh, would be that they address our concerns. I would assume, Minister, that the basic zeitgeist of Brussels and all of Europe is first do no harm. How long can you wait and wait and wait and wait and wait for the United Kingdom to get their act together? Can you wait well into 2018? Well, as far as Brexit is concerned, uh, we have a clear timetable now. We, we see that there are sufficient progress that have been made in the first round of negotiations. So now, we can move forward towards the uh, uh, first transition period and then the future relationship between mm -hmm. the UK and the EU, uh, which uh, obviously needs to be very closed. And for our homework, uh, I think that there is a window of opportunity that now has opened yeah. and that we must take decisions, uh, mm -hmm. I would say, from now to June 18, especially on deepening our uh, economic and monetary union. And these two uh, work streams have to be led in parallel. I want to rip up the script, if I could, Minister. You have a most interesting history within, I will call it, socialism and the domestic politics of France and then your international work as well. What do you make of a Germany that can't get a, governor, a government together within this autumn, winter of 2017? Is this a heightened issue for Europe that we have a caretaker chancellor in Germany? First, there is something interesting about the election itself, is that you can have full employment, you can have a huge uh, success economically, and still uh, people wandering, and, and a split vote, and also uh, an extreme right party coming in uh, inside the parliament, which is the first time since World War II. And that proves that the, the feeling of the voters is still very fragile uh, about Europe and about economy. Uh, second, 
Yes, there is a caretaker <clears throat> government, but there is a government and there is a strong leader uh, who is uh, Madame Merkel. We must not underestimate her. But the fact that there is a caretaker government means that we cannot take decisions on the important files that are ahead of us. Uh, and, and I would especially uh, think again about the Eurozone. We need to deepen the Eurozone. President Macron and President Juncker have made very interesting proposals to have a budget for the Eurozone in order to reduce divergence, to have a, a Minister of Finance for the Eurozone to uh, lead uh, the uh, Eurogroup and also to be a commissioner, and finally to have a, a control by uh, a European Parliament and, and also uh, to, to, to transform our, our economic stability mechanism into a true a European Monetary Fund because we need to solve our own problems. We cannot rely on the IMF forever. I, I hope and I want the IMF to stay with us uh, for the rest of the Greek program, but uh, in the future we need to have our own tools. These are very ambitious proposals and it's, that's why I hope that there will be a government as soon as possible, uh, uh, a full government in Germany, and I hope that my social democratic friends will be on board because they have a responsibility as well for their own country it needs to be governed, mm -hmm. but also for Europe as a whole, because they are truly pro-European. Uh, Commissioner, are you looking at Bitcoin at all? And is the EU planning to take any action to regulate it? You're talking about the Bitcoin? Yes, correct. I didn't... Well, to me, at this stage, we don't consider that as an alternative currency, uh, for example, if you look at the euro. And uh, we see that there is quite a lot of speculation about that. And uh, as Alan Greenspan said, uh, sometimes this uh, speculation is uh, overactive or exuberant. So, uh, well, we look at that, we analyze the phenomenon, but we don't think that we have at this stage to, to react, uh, yes, as a political uh, and technical body. I mean, are regulators looking into it? Do you have conversation with regulators looking at Bitcoin? No, we are not having uh, those conversations right now. Okay, Commissioner, let me ask you, uh, I think, a final question on, on tax havens. So the EU recently adopted a blacklist, right, of tax havens, which include countries like the United Arab Emirates, South Korea, Bahrain. What are the uh, exact implications of being included on this blacklist? First, there is a, a repetitional effect. That's what we call the name and shame. When you're on a blacklist, I, I, I think that you should take commitments uh, uh, to respect international, international standards on tax governance in order to get out of it. But I think that the EU countries now uh, should uh, uh, <clears throat> decide on sanctions no. that can dissuade uh, countries to act in no. that non-cooperative way. And there is not only a, a, a blacklist, but also a grey list of countries which have taken commitments and uh, either they respect the commitments and they're out of the listing process or they don't and they come into the blacklist. Uh, the idea of listing countries, again, is to help them to get out of it uh, and to respect the uh, global standards that we have set in the framework of the G20 of the OECD and our standards at, at the Union. Uh, we have, for example, voted two directives against tax fraud and tax avoidance, and we are going to be very strict, very firm on that, because we know that the public opinion there and our citizens cannot stand tax fraud, tax avoidance, or too aggressive tax planning. But does it mean that EU companies or banks should be actually wary of doing business with these countries? That means, for example, that if uh, one of our banks, or public banks, the EIB or the uh, uh, Bank for Reconstruction and Development, um, is involved in financial markets or banks in those countries, it is not possible. Uh, we must not punish uh, the uh, people of those countries, which sometimes uh, are poor, but we must be clear that uh, uh, bad practices, harmful practices, uh, must, be, uh, must be blamed. Yes.